not let us center ourselves for worship.
Today's reading comes from Genesis 39, verses 1 through 23. Now Joseph was taken down to Egypt, and the Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. He made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer of his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and with him there he had no concern for anything but the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome and good looking. After a time, the master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, with me here, my master has no concern about anything in the house. He has put everything that he has in my hand. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything back from me except yourself, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great thing, wickedness, a sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her. One day, however, when he went up into the house to do his work, and while no one else was in the house, she caught hold of his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, she called out to the members of her household and said to them, See, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. He came into the house to lie with me, and when I cried out with a loud voice, and when he heard me cry, raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Then she kept his garment by her until his master came home, and she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you have brought among us came in to insult me, but as soon as I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. When his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, saying, this is the way your, your servant treated me. He became enraged. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. The place where the king's prisoners were confined, he remained there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. He gave him favor and the seventh chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer paid no heed to anything that was in Joseph's care because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Here is the reading. Our gospel for today is from the book of Luke. We read from the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose that ye that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans, because they suffered such things, I tell you no. But except you repent, you will likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think there were sinners above all who dwelt in Jerusalem? No. Or except you repent, you will likewise perish. The Gospel of the Lord.
Think back to those times when you were really happy. On top of the world, even. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can hold you back. Let the, the, the good times roll, right? You've had those times in our lives, haven't we? Yeah. Then, something happens. Another uh, 20th century philosopher named Willie Nelson, he says, turn out the lights, the party's over. And that's what happens sometimes, it seems. The lights go off. Bad luck, tragedy of some kind, death of a loved one, loss of a job, you didn't get that promotion. You made failing grades on that test you were looking forward to. Yes, life might be a bowl of cherries, but life has knocked you off the pedestal. And you know, when you're, when, when you're down like that, you begin to look around, and, and the only thing you can see is what? All of those people around you were enjoying life, right? All of those people who didn't lose their job, all of those people who got the promotion, all of those people who uh, haven't lost loved ones, all of those people who passed the test, they're all there out having a good time, and you're not. And all you can think, and all you can see, why am I? So, we continue today with our story of Joseph. There, the, there it is. Look at that picture. Before we go on in the sermon, what do you have on one side of the plate? But can you see the pits first? <laughs> what do you think? They look really good first. Oh, there are the pits. How many of you, when you go to see that plate, you're going to grab a pit? How many of you? None. That's all you see, though, right? No. No. Yeah. It's interesting. See pits? Wow. That's good. But you have a plate full of cherries, and after a while, as you munch on them, you have to have a place to pit somewhere, don't you? Now, we're continuing today in our narrative lectionary. We march through Genesis, and we get to the story of Joseph. Last week, of course, when Tim was here, you, uh, we had the story of Abraham. I hope you read it, but you, uh, you probably missed the message on that. That's okay. Now, Joseph. Now, Joseph, what's he known for from our Bible story? That technicolor dream code, right? Right. Let's see if that's on the next slide. There it is. Joseph and his technicolor dream coat. There's a play or a musical, right? Joseph and his technicolor dream coat. Now, if I remember my Bible stories right when I was in Sunday school, you know, Joseph comes off as a bit of a brat. He was dad's favorite, and he let his brother know it. Right? So, he earned his brother's wrath. Of course, it didn't help that they all had different mothers, but that's a different story. Read the story of Jacob. It's very interesting. So, but he earned his brother's laugh, wrath, and early in his life, you could say that his life was nothing but the pits. That's life. So, first, his brothers got incensed at him, and they decided that they would throw him into an actual yeah. Right? Okay. Later on, they sold him to some traders coming out of Egypt. And what happened was, Joseph took up with a uh, upper class Egyptian type and proved to be so talented that he began to run their household. So, up and down he goes. And then he was. Uh, Accused of seducing his, uh, his patron's wife, and he was duly thrown into another kind of pit. Now, all this time, Joseph, who 
start out as a bit of a brat. <coughs> he began to grow his more youthful haughtiness, and, and he began to show some remarkable ability. But he also had remarkably a remarkably pity life for a while. And the reason I saw your, your description of that picture interesting is because that's what bad times do to us, don't they? That's all we concentrate on, is the pits. So when I show you a picture of cherries and pits, what do you see? You see the pits. That's what I heard. I thought, oh, they're pits. We see the bad. And, and, and bad times are like that. Bad luck, misfortune, it's all we can remember. It clouds everything else out in our life. Right? I've dealt with uh, many people who've had severe trauma in their life. Some who had daily reminders of it somewhere on their body. That's all they can remember. That's all they can think about. That's all they can see. They can see past those bad signs. Wallow in despair. Where does a badge of courage? Life is more than the pits. See the next one. Sometimes it's sure. Sometimes it's like that plate we saw. An equal measure of hope. If you look at your life without He'd been severely injured 
in an IED explosion, so much so that he could no longer be chilled. So much of life, of what life is about, so much of what married life is about, is no longer possible for him because of that explosion, because of what being in the army meant to him. He was coming to visit, he and his wife, and I was worried, you know, what do you say to someone like that? How do you make them feel better? Huh? No amount of healing is going to bring that part of his life back to him. But what impressed me about him, his wife, well, in the words of Irma Bob Beck, life had presented him and her with the pits. Literally. A whole bowl of pits. But they both had this boundless optimism and love for each other. Born out of their love for each other and for God. And indeed they ministered to me. Another example. This young man here, I also met at Brook Army Medical Center. He was horribly burned in another IED explosion in Iraq. Now burns are the most painful of injuries, and the pain really just begins when you make it to the burn ward. And you're up for months, if not years, of surgeries, of skin grafts, of pain. And what you see up here in this picture is the young man who came out from the other side. That's what he looks like. There were probably more than are more surgeries in his future. Maybe skin grafts. Maybe some surgeries to make him look better. You know what he does for a living? He's a stand-up punk. He's a stand-up punk. <coughs> Very funny, too. He managed to overcome the pits. He starts to accumulate maybe some charities in his life. And sorry, he may not, he may, he may not look any better than he does. <coughs> but I think it's okay with him. takes on all that life has to offer. Life has been the pits for him. But with God's help, he turned those pits to charity. Ladies and gentlemen, the pits are always going to be a part of our lives. They were for Joseph, they were for the two young men we talked about this morning. But as you see in that uh, last picture, it's not all that's in the bowl, is it? Pits and cherries in equal measure. The question really is not how bad the pits are that you've had to overcome. The question is, can we in faith in God move forward. For yes, the pits are a whole lot of cherries. And you might find, ladies and gentlemen, that what has been meant to do harm in your life, in my life, God 
uses for good. Amen? Amen.